Well, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming to our ASSE luncheon today. Hope you're enjoying the food. Um, you know, after everybody gets first here, then come back. You'll have some extra cookies there, chips, water, soft drinks still, so help yourself. Um, today what we're going to be doing is talking about our spring service project. Okay, so we'll give you all the details about that. First, just wanted to again welcome everyone. In a moment, our chair of the ASSC, Sarah Doyle, she'll t I'll say a few words. First, what I wanted to do is I wanted to do a quick review. Um, as a secretary here, I keep track of you know what we do, or you can go onto the websites. Um, there's a listing. Even if you've registered for these events, you know you can go into your training and see all the events that you've attended for the ASSC. We're quite proud of what we've accomplished this year. One thing that we really tried to do also was to take your feedback, your comments from the evaluation sheets. And Tammy Force, uh, where's Tammy? She's over there. And also uh, Mark Dilly did a great job back there uh, summarizing these evaluations for us so we could try to make improvements as we go on. And we look at it from the years prior as well. We mixed it up a little bit this year. What we did um, in the past is we had the professional record in the winter semester in the beginning. But because of feedback and comments from you, we decided then to feature that earlier in October instead. So we changed the order a little bit of some things, and our most popular sessions we had again. Okay. So hopefully you learned some things from it. Um, if you have questions about anything that we've covered over the year, if you can remember what those questions are, please feel free to ask us. Okay. So we started off in September. We had our annual welcome and recognition ceremony. This was to recognize ESS and promotion for academic staff. So who here in the last year, ESS or promotion? Raise your hand. Don't be shy. All right, congratulations. <laughs> Wonderful. And then in October, again, we moved this session. We put our professional record and best practices workshop. We had that here in the stu student center on the second floor. And people were welcome to bring in their professional records, um, to get comments, feedback on them. And most of the professional records are due for most departments and units sometime in the beginning of the following year. So this gave you a little bit of time to kind of go through revisions, ask the more seasoned staff here what their opinion was, right, and get some good feedback on those. So hopefully that helped. And then we move to November, our annual review and selective salary. Well, once you have your professional record done, then it just kind of follows suit that then we talked about the annual review and the selective salary. December, did anyone attend this? Our holiday party. Mm -hmm. Have fun. It was a great time, right? Yeah. Enjoyed by many. So we had that at Maccabees Traders. It was. Um, we were able to talk with each other, get away from the work environment, and just kind of relax and mingle a little bit, and just get to know each other a little bit better. So it was a great opportunity to do that. Then in January, employment security status and promotion. Okay, so we talked about that in detail. And we also reviewed a little bit the selective salary process, touched upon the professional record again, how all of those three things go together. In February, what's up with HR? Okay, remember that one? Okay, so we had some guest speakers there. Um, and we had some lively communication and interactions in that one. Um, we do, as I mentioned, uh, look at the feedback for those. Um, and we took all the comments. If you want to see what the comments were for this particular session or others, I printed them out, so come up here afterwards if you'd like to take a look at that. But we learned a lot. We learned how our human resources department has been restructured and the hierarchy of it, right? And some specific questions we could ask, you know, and get answers to. So it was a new topic for us with new people. Um, Ellen Barton, the associate provost, was there, as well as some human resources folks. March, which was just last month, seems like for me a year ago, um, but what do they all mean? So if you were attended this one, this one focused on all the many acronyms that we have here at Wayne State University. You know, often like, okay, the ASSC, then the, you know, PD, you know, I mean, all the different ones, right? ASPDC, right? Um, I mean, UAC. Um, sometimes, you know, all these, we kept going on and on about all these different ones. And so we actually went through those and showed the hierarchy of the different departments that we have here, the functions of them, the different units that we have, but what, what do all those acronyms mean? And especially if you're a relatively new employee here, relatively new academic staff member, 
hopefully this kind of put things a little bit in perspective and gave you a little bit of an idea of, okay, I've heard those acronyms, but what do they mean? And I know as an advisor even, um, sometimes we catch ourselves, right, you know, talking to students. We're like, yeah, yeah, just, you know, go to the UAC or, you know, go to the student center, then you can go to the, you know, what is it, the fitness center, you know, the R, you know, FC, this, that, whatever. We catch ourselves saying all these different acronyms. So this is a really good way to explore what do all of these things mean. And that brings us here today to our spring service project, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. Now, there are a couple links down here. You may get some emails from Michael Sampson back there, give him recognition. And he publicizes our events that we do at the ASSC and also for the AAUP AFT. And what's wonderful, if you scroll down to the bottom, he has two different links you can click on. One of them is actually a list of events. So you can click on this and you can see all the events that we do have as it comes up here. And there's a lot of great side tabs here that you can go into. Everything about the AAUP AFT, okay? Calendar downloads, all these things here, but also the list of events. And you can just scroll down here and you can see, just as I went through, all of the things that the AAUP AFT has done. So that is an excellent link if you want to check that out. Also, close this out, this link here, also to do with events, when it comes up here, this is our calendar view, basically. So you can click on different things, but these are for the AAUP AFT. So if you're wondering what type of events is the union hosting, you can go to this calendar from this website. Okay, so I just wanted to bring that to your attention. A couple of great links that you can use, these two right here. Or when you get an email from Michael Sampson, take a look down below and see what those links are. Okay. So now moving along, and how did he know? <laughs> so, so I'm going to turn this over first to uh, Sarah, and then later on Charlie Parrish there is going to talk about the call for nominations. Thank you, Don. I was really appreciative that Don was. Um, took the opportunity just to do an overview of everything that we've done this year. So it's been a really well-informed um, year, and it could not have been done without this wonderful, wonderful committee that we have here. So I just want to take a quick moment to introduce them and thank them for their service. So if Cynthia Merritt will come on up. <laughs> be recognized. Come on up. Come on up. Right. 
Do we have those? I'll pick them up. Okay. And uh, the, uh, I would urge anyone who was interested in, in the uh, office of the chair and co-chair, uh, please uh, do not hesitate to put, put yourself forward. Uh, this is a, this is God's work. <laughs> I can tell you from the past co-chair and Sarah Christmas. And uh, the, uh, it's really been a, been, been a wonderful aspect of the union. So um, why don't I turn it back over to you, Sarah, to, to Yeah, sure. So if anyone's interested in running, please don't hesitate to um, fill out the nomination forms. And all of us will be here today. So if you have any questions about maybe some of the behind the scenes um, and whatnot as far as uh, planning for these types of events, um, feel free to let us know. And with that being said, I want to turn it over back to um, learn a little bit about our service project. Historically, these have been done in the winter. And this year, um, because of our calendar year, we decided to do it in the spring. Um, so yeah, we'll turn it back over to Don um, as far as introducing our service project um, facilitators. Okay, so as Sarah mentioned, um, in the past, we've um, done the service project um, right before the holidays in December. In the past, last year was alternative for girls. Um, that was actually um, Cynthia was leading that one, and then, or, and then prior to that, it was Children's Hospital. I think it was Stacy who had that idea for Children's Hospital toy drive. So we made all collections of all kinds of toys, took them over to Children's Hospital, and the children were just extremely excited. So this year, what we wanted to do, we were thinking about Wayne State, our community, where we're at, what can we do, and we know that Detroit Public Schools is definitely near us. Um, when we service students from all over the Metro Detroit area, but we wanted to try to find a place. Oh, actually, I have two door prizes. <laughs> Interrupting myself here. Okay, I'll do the door prizes just in case anyone has to leave. Um, okay, so hold that thought. I'll be back. So there's some door prizes up here. I'll tell you what they are. How this is going to work? I'm going to choose two people, and that's that red ticket. Does anyone not have a red raffle ticket? If not, Cynthia's going to come around and make sure you get one. Okay, so the door prizes you can choose from. So if your number is called, you come up here and you can choose whichever one you want. Okay, the first one is a Wayne State mug with a $25 gift certificate to Starbucks. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> then after you drink that coffee, maybe if it's decaf and you get sleepy, we have a really plush, cozy blanket here. Okay, <laughs> so that might be one of your options. Appropriate for this to this moment. Definitely. <laughs> Over here, because academic staff like to be so organized, we have a little ideas book, a little notebook, some see, clips, paper clips, rubber bands, and also these really, really cool mason jars that you can use for organizing things. So these four items come as a set. That's an option. If you're a chocolate lover, a lot. How many are in here? Um, a lot. <laughs> then I need a blank. Um, these are the is it Ferraro Rocher. How do you say it? Rocher? Rocher. Fine hazelnut chocolates. So, really good. And then the, in the University Advising Center, um, we contacted Kate Burness, and she runs the ATA, the book club, if you're familiar with that. And she had actually a couple books that were left over. Um, so she generously donated these. This one is called The Speed of Trust, The One Thing That Changes Everything by Stephen Covey. It's an excellent book. The other one is Reclaiming Con Conversation, The Power of Talk in a Digital Age by Sherry Turkle. Okay, so that's also supposed to be an excellent book. So just think of this. You can only win once, right? That'd be cool if you could use the book, the blanket, the chocolate. Stuff. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so you get your choice. And Cynthia's going to choose. Go ahead. She's going to read off the number. So the number, the number is 391. One nine seven one. Woo! Come on down. We better check her. Pick anything you like. Yeah. 
you don't pick quick, the next person might pick this one. <laughs> That's all one. Yeah. <laughs> all right, next one. <laughs> Three, nine, one, one, nine, seven, four. Oh, Woo -hoo, everybody! Come on now. You're the next contestant. Let's get a blanket here, Starbucks. Whoop. She knows. She knows. She was alright. So now that we woke you up a little bit right after you eat, right? Now we're gonna go back to the spring service project. Um, as I was saying, our focus then became, what can we maybe do for students right in our community, for Detroit Public Schools? And we contacted, actually, the Detroit Public School System, and we were trying to figure out where's the most need. And that's very, very difficult to determine, right? Because in any school district, there is usually need, okay? Especially Detroit Public School. Myself, I've even taught in Detroit Public Schools in the past and saw firsthand, you know. And then they thought, maybe we could choose a few schools. Well, how do you choose a school, right? Um, and not be biased between this one and that one and so on. So when I contacted the Detroit Public Schools uh, Partnership and Innovations Department, the Development Department, um, I talked to a lady there named Toria uh, ward Gilkey, and she was going to be here today, but unfortunately she could not attend. But she said, really, it's our middle schools that they see the most need in. And different middle schools and if we wanted to take up some donations of school supplies we could then drop them off to their location and then they would disperse them to the schools where they have the most need so we thought that would be a good way to do it because we're not making the decision they're seeing where the need is greatest okay and we can help the most so that's what we're doing is a school supply donation drive if you actually look on their website the Detroit Public Schools website they've actually reorganized their website and their structure of it. And it took quite some time, to be honest, to try to find who could I even talk to. Okay, we were calling different departments, and we found out that it's actually through Detroit Public Schools Community District in the Development and Partnerships di Division. Okay? And there's all different things. You could search this for quite some time. But right here, there's a donation section. And this is where Toria, she's the manager of that department. So that's the person that we've been dealing with directly for this. And if you wanted to, um, on your own time, you could just browse through different fundraising things, partnerships, STEM partnerships. There's a lot of information on here, okay? So I welcome you to visit that if you'd like. So what do we need for school supplies? And how are we going to coordinate this? How are we going to make this work if we do want to try to take up some donations? Well, they said that middle school students, what they can most benefit from receiving are these items here. And on your table, actually, you should have received in front of you a school supplies list. I think everybody might have that. No, no. no they don't? Oh, okay. No, not at all. So what we'll do is we'll pass that around. <laughs> Thank you, Cynthia and Shauna. And you'll notice also those orange cards, right, that are in the middle of the table, okay? So this is basically what they said that is the most important things that students in middle school can use. And you'll notice that there's not any scissors on here. I did ask about that. They said that we, they prefer that we don't donate scissors. Because sometimes the scissors are too sharp and so forth, and they just prefer, you know, they, they, they purchase them themselves. So this is the list here that you're getting a copy of. And the sheet that I'm passing out on the bottom says basically how you can contact us. I put down Sarah's name also. <laughs> without asking her, but, um, so. but we're, we're coordinating this together. So, you know, contact me if you like. How do you actually get the supplies to us? How do we get them there? Well, if you're interested in donating, it could be from your office, it could be in your department, in your unit. Um, we'll also be dispersing some other flyers that you can post in your department in the next week. I'll send those out to you. But once you start collecting the supplies, if you're interested, that orange little sheet of paper that's on the table there, if you would kindly fill that out, your name, your access ID, so I can email you, and then what department or unit that you're from. Because then I will contact you, and then if you circle that you want a box, and you say yes, then I'll bring you a box to collect those donations. Okay. Otherwise, if you have a place or a box already, or some big bag or something that you can store them in, um, you can do that as well. But I'll come out, drop off a box to you, if you like. We're going to run this donation drive actually all the way to the end of June, June 30th, 
okay? So we're going to start at like the beginning of May for full two months. There are some summer programs that we can still use some of these supplies for, but most of these will be for the fall semester, okay? When the new year starts, the school year starts. So again, if you're interested on that sheet, you'll see all the information. And then we'll also email this to everyone. I'm going to take the registration sheets and then email this PowerPoint and all this information to you as well. So you'll have all that at your disposal. So we're thinking, okay, we're going to have, you know, all these different academic staff members collecting donations in different various departments and units, but how can we make a bigger impact? Well, that's where now I want to introduce someone here, uh, Megan McCullen, if she would kindly come up here. She's actually, she'll introduce herself and tell you more about herself, but I am so excited um, that about a year ago now, or how long? August. <laughs> August. It's been very she, yeah. Intense eight months. Yes. <laughs> she is the new director of the Museum of Anthropology and of also the Planetarium. So we thought, because you know, we see people come in all the time, she'll tell you more about what they do at the Planetarium with outreach for Detroit Public Schools and the whole Metro Detroit area. What if we could somehow have people donate if they're coming to a Planetarium show? And that could get us more donations. And also for you folks, if you have donations and you don't want me to come pick them up, or if you're going to a planetarium show, you can bring them there too. So I'm going to turn this over to Megan now. Okay. I'm going to attempt to pull up my slideshow. Anybody been to the planetarium before here? Who has not? Oh, we need to go. It's, so it's in the old main building on the ground level, the middle hallway. Thank you. It was actually renovated. Um, that room that it's in right now did not exist prior to 1996. When they closed down the old main building, they actually built out into the courtyard a room, a 27-foot dome, and it seats 60 people. That's our planetarium now. So since 2009, we upgraded our system, and now Megan, she is in charge of it all. She just gave my talk. Because <laughs> Don knows everything about the planetarium, so... Um, uh, thanks for uh, inviting me, Don, and asking me to help out with this. Um, I was really excited uh, when Don asked about doing this. Um, so uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the museums and the planetarium first, because I would love it if you all come visit. I would also love it if your student organizations and your departments want to come visit, or if you want to bring your families to come visit, if you want to tell other people you know to come visit. Um, we are happy to work with all of them. And a lot of people, um, don't realize that we're in Old Main and that we have a planetarium on campus because people are used to looking for a dome when they think of planetariums and ours is hidden in the courtyard and so I never knew we had a planetarium. So it's a constant uh, battle to get the word out. You want me a little further over? Okay. <laughs> then we're going to get a little bit of turn uh, action as I uh, switch through. So we actually have, uh, I'm in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, and we have three museums and the planetarium in the college. Uh, so we have the Museum of Anthropology, which is on the first floor of Old Main. That's been closed for a few years, um, and uh, we're slowly reopening it now that I'm here. Uh, but uh, there's a little mini exhibit up, and there's some uh, cool archaeological materials from Detroit in there, and some stuff on sustainability. Um, so please come visit us on the first floor. Again, the planetarium is a 60-seat planetarium that's in the lower level of Old Main. Right next to that, we have our new mineral museum, um, which is also fantastic. And then over in biology, they have a natural history museum as well. And so I tend to focus most on anthropology and the planetarium, but we all work together um, to try to bring um, school groups in, to bring families in. And so I'm really interested in this uh, project that you're doing to help uh, DPS um, because that's part of what we're trying to do too is engage with these communities either in their classes or when they're home with their families and so trying to get the Detroit kids interested in um, liberal arts and science so what we do at the planetarium um, we have free public shows every Friday night uh, so again if you have students who are saying I'm bored there's nothing to do I don't know what I want to do Send them to us. We will happily take them on Friday nights. Um, but uh, we have two shows, one at 7 and one at 8.30. So we have about 120 people coming through the door every Friday night um, uh, this year. And so uh, Facebook has been our friend this year. And suddenly um, we've got uh, a lot of people coming through. Um, you can see this was, our, this was when we first started um, 
really, once, right after the uh, Facebook announcements, we just had this crazy group of line outside. And I was like, let me take your picture. Um, <laughs> planetarium, because people are really excited to be able to, it's expensive to go to a science museum with a whole family. And so being able to go someplace free and have this experience um, with your family is something that a lot of people are really interested in doing. So it's nice that we can provide that for them. Um, we also do um, sort of like tiny tot shows once a month on Saturdays for our younger um, astronomers, as we call them. Our shows are about an hour and 15 minutes long. We talk about the current night sky. Um, essentially, if you haven't been to a planetarium, it's dome-shaped so that it replicates the night sky above you. The seats are comfy and slightly reclined, so if you're tired, you will fall asleep. But if you're not, and that's okay. But if you're not, you get an amazing view of the night sky. Um, and one of our uh, astronomy students, or physics students, who are staff there, will um, give you an overview of what you can see right now in the night sky. They might talk about something they're particularly interested in. We have somebody who's got favorite exoplanets. Other people will talk about the solar system and their favorite moons and um, uh, studying stars, all these sorts of things. So it's a little bit different every time. I say come back every couple of months so that the sky has changed enough that you can learn some new things about what's in the current night sky. Um, and then we always have a uh, full dome movie, so a movie that takes up that full dome as well, um, that has something to do with science. Uh, many of them are about things like black holes. Um, we have one about going to Mars. So uh, Earth and what Earth, what makes Earth unique compared to other planets. Um, and so again, those rotate a little bit, so it's different every time you go. Um, we also do free public science lectures once a month during the school year. Um, so again, if you're interested in science, if you have um, colleagues that are interested in looking for ways to get engaged with that, um, those are always posted on our website. They're posted on the events calendar for Wayne State. Um, and so uh, we try to bring in not just astronomy and physics talks. Uh, I'm actually an anthropologist, so I bring in an archaeologist every month or every, every semester. So that's what I'm really interested in. Uh, so uh, we're always uh, happy to have the public again engaging with science and we do have people who will bring their kids um, from the community so if you've got younger people who are really interested in science um, this is a great way that we get to connect with them and introduce them to some of our faculty and then we do all sorts of k-12 programming the reason I was running a little late today uh, was this group of students that we're grumpy because I just made them stop eating their ice cream to come back into the planetarium uh, because we don't allow ice cream in the planetarium. Uh, but uh, this is a, a group of students from um, West, no, I always say Western International High School. Yes, yes okay. Yes. I, in my head I kept saying Warren. It's not Warren, it's Warren. Western International High School down in southwestern Detroit. That's the only um, Detroit high school that has an astronomy class. And so every year they come to visit us and so this was a group of two astronomy classes, a robotics class, and a physics class um, that were in this morning uh, for a planetarium show and some physics demos. And so uh, we were really excited to have them here, uh, and we try to um, work with these sorts of communities whenever we can. Um, Professor Cackett, who's one of our astronomers, actually works pretty regularly with this class. Um, and he has also donated uh, a bunch of solar telescopes to the Detroit Public Schools um, so that they can do astronomy during the day, because, right, it's kind of hard to teach astronomy during the day, because you can't see the stars, except for one. Uh, and so you shouldn't look at it unless you have the right type of telescope. So um, we've been trying to develop these collaborations um, for many years now. So we bring them in for shows. We also go out and do events. Um, we do our physics demos. This is Jerry with a frozen uh, flower that's been frozen in liquid nitrogen for people to crush down with their hands and see just what happens when you freeze things at very, very cold temperatures. Um, so we try to engage. Uh, students and sometimes these are resources that teachers don't have in their classrooms and so being able to have them come visit us um, or bring these things to them is something that we're interested in trying to do more and more of. This is just more pictures and things that we're currently um, starting to work on uh, this summer that's me being way too excited about a plushy particle. <laughs> uh, that's an electron neutrino right there apparently. Um, I was really excited to buy those. We are working on setting up uh, duplicate copies of some of the activities that we have in the planetarium for teachers in DPS to be able to borrow from us because some of these things are the kinds of things you only use once a year and it's not justifiable to necessarily buy your own set. 
but if they can borrow a set from us uh, with directions so that they can talk about elements and use our diffraction glasses to talk about spectroscopy or um, I'm making a particle party because I think that sounds fun. I don't know if other people will think it's fun. I think it's fun uh, with all of our little stuffed animal particles that uh, you can engage with. Um, so we're trying to work on these sort of new ways to engage the community. Um, and then, of course, we have all sorts of other special events we go out to. This was the um, eclipse viewing over at the Michigan Science Center. Uh, that was my third day of work, so that was terrifying. Um, I'm really grateful for our physics faculty. They were very helpful to me that day. Um, uh, and then we do programs here, uh, pulling out the telescopes. We were looking at the moon last week for statewide astronomy night. Um, it's hard to do astronomy in Detroit because of the fact that we have so much light pollution and it's so cloudy in Michigan, but uh, you can certainly do some of it and the moon is always easy to see and it's amazing to see and a lot of people haven't looked through a telescope, so who's never looked through a telescope? It's okay. Uh, okay, just a few people. Okay, well, good, good. All right. You can also use your binoculars. So we're trying to work on that. Uh, the astronomy teacher and I were just talking today about trying to develop some more in-city programming with the telescopes um, and doing these sorts of things. So uh, again, just trying to improve those collaborations. Um, and the museum is also doing outreach. Um, less so because we're just getting started up. The planetarium was going and functional um, and already had all of these connections. And so we're working on doing the same kinds of things with the Anthropology Museum, really looking at Detroit history through archaeology is our main focus uh, in our outreach there. We have a program called Time Jumpers um, where we have them piecing together artifacts and thinking about stratigraphy and layers of soil and learning about how archaeologists do their research. So, um, we are going to have these supply trunks uh, that Dom was talking about in the planetarium and the museum as well. We're going to be open all summer. We take a week off the first weekend of May because of finals. Um, everybody needs a break. But otherwise, every Friday night in Old Maine, it's hopping. The Mineral Museum is open, the Anthropology Museum is open, the Planetarium is open, um, and then the museum is open other hours throughout the week as well. And we have a reservation system for two-thirds of our seats. So we have email contact for those people. So we always send out an email. So in the email, we're going to include the information about uh, the supply fund, the supply drive, uh, and request that people bring things in for us. And so we did that uh, last semester with the food pantry, um, and that was fairly successful. So um, we've already got a system in place to be able to do this, and so I was really excited to see a new opportunity. And again, one that is less likely to excite critters. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Um, nobody's going to try to chew on our pens um, if we leave them for a couple of extra days. So uh, that would be good. And again, it just helps us to help the student community, and we're really excited to be able to do that. Um, so, if anybody has questions about the planetarium or the museum, I can take them. Yeah? Uh, what ages you said you had some programs for younger ages and what other So, the Friday night shows are generally good for, I'd say, kids that are seven or eight and up, or if you have a younger kid who, you know, has is about space the way that some kids are about dinosaurs, you know, and they just know it all. Um, but I would say for like the first and kindergarten and younger is what our Saturday show is really geared towards. Those are one Saturday a month. It's the second Saturday of each month we do those uh, at 11 a.m. And that information is on our website. I do have little flyers about our Friday night shows to pass out to everybody. Uh, but it doesn't have Saturday on it because it was too much information. So, um, and we also do... Um, we do shows for organizations on campus at no cost. So if you're in a department that has a student organization that is looking for an event to do, um, we've certainly had people come in and do events. We also do film showings for people there. So the film club has used us. Um, so again, if, if you can use a space that is a theater space, thank you, because yeah, I'll keep talking. <laughs> uh, we're happy to work with student groups and with uh, other campus organizations as well. Uh, just have them get in touch with us, um, track me down, don forward things to me if you can't remember where to find me, um, and we can do those sorts of things. So we use the space for lots of shows for physics students and astronomy students, but there's extra time that it's not being used. And so the more groups that we can get in there using it in different ways, the happier we are about um, having them in there to use that space. Thanks.
Uh, that's a good question. So just a couple more slides and some more door prizes. <laughs> Okay, so, thank you again, Megan, for letting us know about the planetarium. Again, if you're interested in participating in the DPS schools, middle school, um, school supply drive, donation drive, then please fill out that orange card, just really quick to fill out, and then I'll get back to you. But as I mentioned, also, I'll be sending you an email with all this information, but it's still be great if you fill out those cards. Um, the drive ends again on June 30th. So that's going to give us a full two months um, to collect things. And we'll send periodic reminders as well. Um, and we don't expect you to go out and like spend a lot of money and buy all these things. Okay? When I was talking to Toria from DPS, she said that often some people, what they'll do, they'll even go to garage sales and estate sales. Um, and they'll, in fact, I even bought like two big boxes of binders and they're in my basement. I'm like, why am I, why do I have two big boxes of binders? What am I going to do with them? Just because they were only $2 doesn't mean, you know, I needed to buy them. But something like that, you know, I can donate that. So, you know, look for things like that. You know, if you're out and about and you see a sale or something like that, um, again, we don't want you to go out there and spend all your money on this. But if you find an opportunity that comes across that you can come across these items for relatively very inexpensive or maybe free, then we'd appreciate the donation. Any questions at all about this donation drive right now? Any questions? So, uh, uh, Anana has a question about how to um, share this with others in her office or in her area. So, yeah. Well, I do have to do a question and send it to my person on my door. Is that happening? Yeah, I, I'll send you that um, school supply list also. I'll send you that flyer. Yep, that exact one. I can send that to you also, okay. to everyone. So when, if you signed in and I know that you were here, then I'll be sending that to everyone, along with a copy of the PowerPoint. Any other questions about the donation drive or the logistics? Again, if you want a box, I can bring a box to your office. I'll send you a flyer so you can inform you know, the rest of your unit if you want. Drop things off at the planetarium or even my offices. Sarah's office. <laughs> yep. Okay. All right. So more door prizes before we get to the evaluations at the end. So this calls for Cynthia. We have remaining this really beautiful blanket, cozy. The two books up here. I know people like to still read. Come on. Um, and then the chocolates. Okay. Mix them up. Mix them up. <laughs> mix them up. Mix them up. Okay. Not that one. I'm just kidding. That's mine. <laughs> That's mine. That's mine. <laughs> 319 1968. I told you it's mine. Uh, no way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> way, way, way. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, this is Gary. Uh, you don't need to play the lottery tonight. <laughs> so, whatever you'd like. Wow. That's amazing. Okay, I'm gonna mix it. Who's okay. gonna call the next one out? All right. <laughs> oh, you want me to play? How about we have some over here? We'll bring it over here. Okay. We'll blame it on her. What did she fix herself? Yeah, I want to win. Okay. Um, number is. Three nine one. I said that wrong. Three nine one one nine six seven. Oh, Lisa! Hey. Oh, she's very uh -huh. Must be present to win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Say that to me. It's one or the other. Yeah. yeah. Okay, another one. How about Anita? Draw number. It better not be my own. Huh? <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you for a great program. Thanks for coming. And there's more 